Thus we saw that the disc will be split up or grouped into partitions or volumes and there is a separate directory structure for each partition maintaining the list of files and information about these files and to keep them organized in this partition. And a separate file system or even a separate type of file system is used for each. Now we shall see how this directory can be structured or which are the common schemes for defining the logical structure of a directory. The first one is the single level directory. Here there is a single directory per each partition and all the files are kept in this directory or all the file entries are kept in this directory. That is, it is a flat file system with one entry per each file. And what are the advantages of this type of directory structure? It is the simplest directory structure which is easy to implement and easy to support and most of the operations such as insertion, deletion, etc. are simple and even the search operation is simple if the number of files is less. But as the number of files increases, the search operation will take more time. And one another major disadvantage is, since all the files are kept in the same directory, each file should have a unique name. Thus, even if there is a single user, as the number of files increases, it will be difficult to find unique names for each file and also to remember the names of all the files. And for multiple users, this system may become inadequate because of this naming problem since more than one user cannot name their file in similar way based on the content of the file and some systems keep a limit on the length of the file name too. Next is the two level directory. Here, instead of having a single directory for all the files, each user will be having his own directory called user file directory, which contains the list of all the files belonging to that particular user. In addition, there will be a master file directory in which there is an entry for each user or each user file directory. Whenever a user login, his name or account number will index into the master file directory to find his entry and this entry will be pointing to his user file directory listing all his files. Thus, all his file operations are confined to the files listed in this user file directory. Whenever the user refers to any particular file, only this directory will be searched. Now what are the advantages of this directory structure? Here, the name collision problem is somewhat resolved between the users. Multiple users can have the files with same name or even the directories with same name. Then the single user's files are grouped together, thus the files are organized compared to the single level directory. And since all the user's operations are confined to his own directory, a user cannot accidentally delete any other user's file with the same name. Now what are the limitations of this directory structure? Here even though the name collision problem is resolved between the user, within the directory the file names should be unique. Then there is isolation between the users and the users are completely independent of each other. Thus if the users need to work on the same task, they may need to access one another's file. But once a user logs in, he can see and access only his files and cannot access any other's files unless the permission is given explicitly. And if the access is permitted, he should name the other user's file with the proper path.
that is first the username then the file name then the user should know and remember the proper path name of the file if he needs to access the other user's file if the access is permitted now what about the system files related to loaders, assemblers, compilers and so on. Whenever a system file is also accessed, the system will search it in the user file directory. Because every file which is accessed will be searched in each user's directory. The, the system files should be copied to each user's user file directory. But this will waste an enormous amount of space. One solution is to keep a special user directory which is common to all users where the system files are kept. Whenever a file is accessed, it is first searched in the local user file directory. If the file is found, it is used. If not found, the system searches the special user directory containing the system files.